In this video, we'll be looking at a configuration guide for the newly released ATR4272 for Honeycomb Aeronautical's Bravo Throttle Quadrant. In addition, I'll be showing you how to calibrate your throttle in the cockpit. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, head over to your Control Options menu. Make sure the Bravo Throttle Quadrant is highlighted and my two-engine jet profile. We're going to be modifying that from a previous video. If you're not up to speed, not a major problem as we'll be configuring all the axes from scratch. First of all, we need to duplicate this profile. To do that, we open the Preset Manager and select the second icon along Duplicate and give it a name that suits you. I'm going to call it unsurprisingly ATR and it should show as the active profile under the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. A quick note on how I've set up the Bravo. I've used the two GA throttles, not the airliners, as they match it more closely. For the condition levers, I've used the two prop handle and the flap axis. My throttles are on axis 2 and 3, condition levers 4 and 5, and flap 6. For the ATR4272, I won't be using the first axis. But that was allocated to spoilers in the two-engine jet profile, so we can go ahead and delete that. Select Search by Input, Move Axis 1, Joystick L, Axis Y, click on the configuration box and we're going to clear current input and validate and it's gone. We're done with that axis, I can now cover it up, we won't be using it again. For the avoidance of confusion we're going to be deleting all our power management axis and reconfiguring. Clear our search by input, change our filter to assigned and select the power management submenu. There we have throttle, let's open that. And we're now going to go ahead and delete all entries under throttle. If it's quicker for you to simply reassign the axis to the relevant throttle, that's fine. But I thought this would be easier for those not familiar with configuring the Bravo throttle quadrant. To delete it, we do exactly the same as we did with the spoiler axis. Select the config box, clear current input and validate. And our power management settings are gone. Let's now rebuild our power management access and to do that we change the filter to new and then collapse all the menus, then select power management and then select throttle. Once you're in the throttle menu, scroll down, we're looking for throttle access 1. There it is. Not a requirement but when you're configurating it's often a good idea to put your levers down to the idle position, not into the detent, just into idle. Throttle 1 is on Axis 2, click in the configuration box, then in Start Scanning and move the lever forward and back. Joystick L, Axis X, happy with that, validate. We'll now do exactly the same thing with Axis 2. And Throttle Axis 2 is just a little bit above on the same page, we'll just scroll up and we're going to do exactly the same thing. And obviously this time we're going to move our throttle number 2 which is on Bravo axis number 3. Joystick R, axis Zulu, validate, and we've now assigned our two throttles. Both the ATR42 and 72 have reverses, so let's configure that. First of all, throttle 1 decrease, let's select that. Make sure your lever is in the idle position. Start scanning, and move throttle 1 into the detent and back out again. Joystick button 25 and validate. That's our reverser for throttle 1. Now throttle 2 decrease, we do exactly the same thing. Remember to register, you've got to move it into the detent and back out again. We now have throttle 2 decrease, but we're not quite done with the throttles yet. I've just changed my filter to assign to make access easier and open up the throttle configuration again. And what we need to do here is untick the reverse axis on both throttle 1 and throttle 2. Now this assignment will give you reverse thrust, but will require you to nudge the throttles forward to get them to idle. But we can automate that process by once again, change our filter to all, back to throttle 1, and we're looking for throttle 1 cut. Select that, and we're also going to assign it to the detent, exactly as we did for throttle 1 decrease. Start scanning. Move into the detent position, joystick button 25, ignore the error message. Now a bit of a run around because Microsoft Flight Simulator is buggy. Select throttle 1 cut again 
and this time change the action type from on press to on release. We could have done that originally, but it never holds. Just doing a check again and the action type is on release, seems to be sticking, all good, let's do now throttle to cut. Start scanning, we're going to move throttle 2 into the detent position. By default the action type is on press and we're going to go ahead and validate. Then we're going to th select throttle 2 cut again and change the action type to on release. And hopefully it should stick. When changing the action type always go back and do a quick cross check. As it is very buggy and often doesn't stick. Throttle 1 cut looks fine. Do another check on throttle 2 cut. On release, that looks fine. All good to go. Come on, Microsoft and Asobo, it shouldn't be that difficult. Keeping our filter on new or all, and again under power management, the ATR has condition levers, but to configure them, we have to use the propeller axis. So scroll down, we're looking for propeller axis 1. There it is. You know the drill by now. Start scanning, and I'm going to push the propeller axis forward. Joystick R, axis Y. Happy with that, I can now validate and we'll go ahead and do exactly the same for Propeller Axis 2. That's now done. These condition levers in the ATR also control the fuel flow and the fuel cutoff. And that's moving the condition levers into the feather position. And this will give us the correct function of fuel cutoff in the aircraft itself. To find what I'm looking for quickly, I'm going to use the search by name and I'm going to type in feather. Actions associated with that word pop up and I'm looking for toggle feather switch 1. Make sure my condition levers are in the idle position. Select the config box and move the lever into the detent and back out again and validate. For condition lever 2, we do exactly the same. We're done. Just a note, if you wanted to use the airliner handles with the pull lever for your reverses, you would just configure throttle 1 decrease and throttle 2 decrease to both the detent and the action when the lever is pulled up. At any time, you can change your filter to assigned and check all the relevant bindings that you've mapped. As we started from our twin engine jet profile, you'll find that axis 6 is already mapped to the flaps, so no changes required here. Note on the flaps, the reverse axis should be ticked. Oh, and that reminds me, the propeller axis that we assigned to the condition lever, let me just check, I, no, I didn't untick, untick the reverse axis for both throttle and props. Okay, let's jump into sim. I'm on the runway, engine's running. We go straight to the EFB and the options tab. On the right hand side is throttle setup, select that. We need to calibrate our throttle axis for this aircraft. After some trial and error, when first entering, do yourself a favor and save yourself a heap of time. Make sure throttle hardware has reverse axis is not ticked. Click on default, then select dual axis. For calibration, the throttle has three settings, idle, notch and ramp. This can be very confusing as there's no documentation at this time with this aircraft which is poor show, to be honest. To understand it, let's have a quick look at the throttle. Idle position is self-explanatory, and at the bottom of the white line, that is your notch position. I always understood it to be at the top of the white line in the ATR, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. Our ramp position is at the bottom of the red line. Notch is your takeoff power. Ramp is your go-around power, which is not quite full throttle, which is only used for emergencies, as extended use will damage the engines. As you move the throttle in sim, there are a number of subtle detents that you can visually see. And the detent for notch seems to be right there. And for the ramp position, again, gently feeling your way, but it's at the bottom of the red line. There it is, and that's correct. Okay, so I hope that made some sort of sense. Back to idle. Whilst we're here, we might as well do a quick check on our flaps and our condition levers, as they don't require any form of special calibration. In addition to fuel cutoff, the condition levers have three set positions, low or ground, auto, and 100%. Unless it's exceptional circumstances, 
all the flights are completed in the auto position. I don't show it in this video, but the fuel cutoff works fine, as does the flaps axis. And for the flaps you can use either the lever on the right hand side or the axis itself. With both power levers in the idle position, click on set on both of the axes. I'm now moving them about three quarters of the way forward. They don't have to match what's happening in sim at this stage. And I'm going to select set for both axes on the notch. And now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to move it forward, not to max, or you'll get an error message. And select set for both. Once all three positions are set, select validate, confirmation, select OK, and we're done. Back into our ATR and we can check. Throttles don't automatically move into the preset position. You've got to find it. Both throttles are now in the notch position. We can now move forward and look for the ramp position, which should just be at the bottom of that red line. There it is. And we can push forward to maximum throttle and back to ground idle. A quick test on our reverse thrusters to make sure they're working. First of all, throttle one into reverse. That's working fine. I can hear a change in tone in the engine and throttle two or power lever two into reverse. Now take them out. Back to ground idle. There is a short delay, but because we got the power cut function, they return directly to idle. From the reverse position, as we move them forward, we can see the small levers come down and the power levers move to idle. When you test this yourself, I recommend that you have your condition levers in the auto position and you'll be able to feel and see the difference as the engines will at that time be fully spooled up and you'll be able to see the change taking place by monitoring the engines directly. And that brings us to an end of the configuration guide. I hope that you found this useful and helpful and will help you enjoy the ATR 42 or 72 more. I haven't really had time to get into it in detail at this point. And I must say the cockpit reminds me quite a bit of the Dash 8Q400. Thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, look after yourselves, I'll see you all again very soon, and bye for now.